types of captivity. People are in bondage. Many people are in bondage. And some do not know that they are in bondage. But I want to expose. I bring an expose. Uh, just to let you know the type of captivities that are there in the world today. Now, people are bound. And, tend, and those who are bound tend to attack those who are free. So you find that when you see a drunkard, you want to attack people that are not drunk. Because they are not singing the same tune. And in the, same way, in the same way, we find that people that are in bondage will also tend to fight those that are not in bondage. Deuteronomy 30 verses 3. Deuteronomy 30 verses 3. Let's look at a few scriptures. Deuteronomy 30 verses 3. Give us a scripture. It says that the Lord your God will bring you back from captivity and have compassion on you and gather you again from all the nations uh, uh, nations why the Lord your God has scattered you now if you begin from verse 2 look at go back to verse 2 kindly and you will return to the Lord so the number one thing that will get us out of captivity is returning to the Lord your God and obey his voice so we return to the Lord obey his voice according to all that he has commanded today and you and your children with all your heart and with all your soul. So our return to God will free us from captivity. In 2 Peter 2.19, 2 Peter 2.19, 2 Peter 2.19, go to 2 Peter. He says, while they promised them liberty or freedom, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome, by him also is brought into bondage. So again, we need, to be over, over, we need to overcome our bondages. People are in various bondages in this life. But I'm going to bring an expose here uh, just to give you a few of the bondages that people are in. Uh, one, one more statement that I need to make here is that some are walking upside down, yet they are walking in this life. Have you ever seen people walking upside down? They are not walking straight the way they should. Many people are making errors making mistakes uh, because their lives are in bondage in john 8 23 look at what john says john 8 23 john 8 23 and he said unto them you are from beneath not above you are from beneath i am from above you are of this world i am not of this world jesus is telling the disciples that you are from beneath and i'm from above so, because Jesus came to redeem us, we need to be above and above only uh, and not beneath. In 2 Timothy 2.26, again, you, you look at that, Timothy, 2 Timothy 2.26, and that they may come to their senses. We must come to our senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Now look at, we have been taken captive by Satan that we are doing the will of Satan. But again, we must come to our senses through the word of God and the deliverance. Let me give you a few bondages. Number one, a lot of people suffer from inherited captivity. A lot of people suffer from inherited captivity. They are bound right from the beginning from birth. That's why you find that there are many children who are even from birth, they have queer behaviors. They have strange behaviors. And, and, and the parents wonder, what is happening with my, uh, my son, my daughter? Because the, the behaviors of the child from birth are strange. That is uh, captivity. When they are birth in captivity, depending on the parents. Number two, some people go into captivity from their own personal decision. People decide. You can decide to be a drunkard. You can decide to do uh, drugs. You can decide to be a robber. Whatever decision you make that is out of the norm or out of the word of God, then you go into captivity. That is by your own decision. People decide to do things that are not right or they are influenced and then they find themselves uh, in bondage. So people go to bondage because of their decisions. Uh, number three, some are made captives by force. Although we hate captivity, but we are forced into captivity. For example, uh, there was one girl who do not like cassava. 
who do not like uh, Mihogo. But in her dreams, at night when she sleeps, the caterer, the caterers, who comes at the night, forces her to take this, uh, this food she doesn't want to take. They bind her, tie, tie, ties her hands, and give her the food to eat by force. That's bondage. Sometimes your dreams reveal the kind of bondage you are in. Your dreams reveal the kind of bondage you are in. So when you look at your dreams, it will tell you what kind of bondage are you in. As some of us will, uh, will, 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 will see from our dreams. Now, in Ezra 4, go back to Ezra chapter 4. Ezra 4, 1. Let's look at one scripture, Ezra 4, 1. Now when the adversaries of, the, of Judah... And Benjamin heard that the descendants of the captive, the descendants of the captivity were building the temple of the Lord of Israel. Verse 2. Go to verse 2. They came to Zerubbabel and, and the heads of the father's house, houses, and said to them, Let us build with you, for we, we seek your God as you do, and we have sacrificed to him since the day of uh, Eshabhadan. Uh, king of Assyria, who brought us here. But Zerubbabel and Joshua, the rest of the heads of the father's house, houses of Israel, say to them, you may, you may do nothing with us to build a house for our God, but we alone will build to the Lord our God of Israel, as King Cyrus had, and, and King of Persia has commanded us. Verse 4, Then the people of the land tried to discourage the people of Judah, they troubled them in building. These were people that the Israelites were taken to captivity. But now, they came back to build the walls of, of Jerusalem. But you find that the, the people attacked them. You know, they came pretending that they were worshipping the same God. And when they were denied the opportunity, they discouraged the people from building the wall. Many times, you find that when you succeed, you must watch for the people who, are, who come pretending. And if you allow them in, they will destroy the work of your hand. Many people pretend to be friends, to be a relative, to be people who care. But yet, their agenda is to destabilize your business, destabilize your job, destabilize your marriage. Destabilize. So you should not let them in because they come with an agenda. Amen. Uh, I still have a few minutes. Number four, we find that there are other activities, um, other uh, bondages or captivity that we go in, we call them accidental bondages or accidental captivity. Accidental captivity. Many people are under captivity, but they are ignorant. People are ignorant. You find that people are in accidental. Ulingia tu kwa captivity accidentally. But you are ignorant about the situation you are in. Unknown to many that they refer as freedom, but merely bondage. Many people think that they are free. They are free. Like, you know, taking a little wine. You know, you, you can do that. It's freedom. Uh, going to disco is freedom. Doing what you want to do. You think it is freedom. But in actual sense, it is not freedom. The enemy is luring you into serious bondage or into serious captivity. So you find that sometimes what we call freedom is not freedom. It's an enticement or a snare for you to get into the trap of captivity. Now, many people are going through pain, agony, uh, terrible suffering in spite of their fasting and prayers because there is a crack in the wall that you need to close. People are praying. People are fasting. But nothing is happening. Their prayers are not helping them. Because there are cracks on the wall that need to be closed. You see, when you have cracks in the wall, and yet you are praying, the prayers will not work. Because you are in bondage. For example, a person in prison cannot enjoy the blessings of God he will only see them through the window, but he can do nothing about it. Why? He's in, he's in prison. So he's not allowed to go out. So many people are, are in bondage, yet they look like 
prospering, yet they are stagnated. So you find that many people are stagnated in life and come to a standstill because of the bondages that they are in. Somebody is working, getting a good salary, doing nothing with the money. So he doesn't enjoy his own salary, but his workers are enjoying salary more than himself. He lives to serve, but he is not allowed to enjoy. You may have a house girl who is taking care of your children. She enjoys the food in the house. She enjoys everything that you have, even watching television, but you cannot. You have no time for television. You have no time even for your children. You are, you, are, you, are, you are walking up and down looking for money, but you never enjoy it. It's a bondage. It's a bondage. Now, they wander in prayer. They pray, yet God cannot answer the prayers of a person in bondage. So when you are in bondage, God cannot answer your prayers until you come out of bondage. Because you have the power to come out. You have the power of a principality. Now, many Africans, and, and, and I'm saying because we are all Africans, many Africans are, 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 are controlled by our traditions. We are controlled by our traditions. So tradition becomes a serious bondage to many people. Serious bondage. Because tradition tells us to do uh, out of the biblical norm. That is why in Mark 7, verses 4, verses 4 let me, uh, let's give us, give us the scripture, Mark chapter 7. Uh, it says, And when they came from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. Uh, there are many other things which they have received and hold like washing of cups, peaches, uh, copper vessels, and coaches. Uh -huh. And then the Pharisees and scribes ask him, why do your disciples not walk according to the traditions of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? These are traditions. And Jesus, what did Jesus say? The, and the, the Pharisees and the scribes are, uh, how he answered and said to them, this is Jesus answering, uh, well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites? As it is written, these people honor me with their lips but their hearts are far from me and in vain they worship me teaching us doctrines the commandments of men they teach us doctrine the commandment of for laying for laying for laying aside the commandments of god you hold on to the tradition of men and the washing of pitches cups and many other such things you do uh-huh and he said to them all too well you, re re you reject the commandments of God that you may keep your traditions. So you find that many times we are controlled by tradition. Now, let me, let me surprise you. I went to one of the, uh, one of, one of the Rorashios. I hope you understand what Rorashio is. I don't know. To the quality name. Dowry, payment. And, and, and these people are Christian. And even... The pastors were there, and they said, I want us first to lay aside Christianity. Put aside Christianity. Let us talk about our Kikuyu tradition. Then we will pick the Christianity later on. Now, <laughs> was that well, really, is that, is, is, that, is, that, is, that, is that not tradition? How do you put away Jesus first, and then you take the tradition, and then when you are finished with the tradition, now leave the tradition, take Jesus on, bring him in. It doesn't work. That one does not work. It's either you are a Christian or you are not. So we, we told them that we cannot do what you are saying unless we postpone the whole affair. If not, stop it. It was a difficult, it was, they, they were decisions. We made very tough decisions very tough decision but we thank god god prevailed all the people that were opposing were thrown out and we did a christian dowry amen so again you find that those those are dangerous areas to watch in your life 
Now ask yourself, are you controlled by your tradition? Are you controlled by your tradition? Are you practicing your tradition more than God? Because that will give you the answers of what you are talking about. So I pray that even as tonight as we pray, may we over, overshadow every tradition. If the Holy Spirit brings in you the traditions, you must refuse. Like for example, when we go back home, uh, I come from Western, we are told that they are, they are kuna kuanga na kumbu kumbu, ya wale wale kufa, tunachincha ngombe mausi, mbusi mausi, na damu tunamuaka kwa makaburi. Ama tunavalisho nguo, tunambio vaheni nguo kalaflani, hiyo siku ya kumbu kumbu. Those are traditions. And this, those traditions are deadly when it comes to God and the Word. Thank you.